pleased to welcome you to the 2019 Virtual Vascular Lab YouTube channel. Thank you so much to all the new subscribers. And a special gratitude to all our day ones, man. We really appreciate you. We have lots of good things in store for you. Hope everyone had a great holiday and got some extra time off to do some of the important stuff. Spend time with friends and family and loved ones. One of the things about healthcare, you know, you don't always get time off during the holidays when there's parties going on and everyone else is enjoying time off. Well, I'm in outpatient world now, but in my long history of hospital service, I work plenty of holidays. I always took solace in helping others. The patient certainly doesn't want to be there either. Just try and make someone else's day a little better by giving them good service and a nice smile. My name's Bill Schroeder. A lot of you probably already know that. This is Tuesday's technical tip. Today, carotid duplex tips. We got a lot of these. Chapter one, image orientation. Hope you enjoy. Well, I've been doing ultrasound for a long time. Actually, more years than I almost want to admit. I've been doing vascular ultrasound for a good many more years than 30. And this is kind of a distillation of my experience with carotid duplex. There's a number of things we need to pay attention to in order to avoid errors. Here they are, correct image orientation, proper instrument settings, angle, angle, angle of insonation, probably the number one source of error. We need to make sure we consider the whole study and make sure that the entire picture of what's going on is present. We know that stenoses abide by hemodynamic principles. There should be a focal flow acceleration at an area of visualized narrowing. We want to see that post-stenotic flow pattern. And of course, we should see altered flow proximal and or distal depending on the severity of disease. We want to make sure and explain all Doppler changes with imaging and really beware the image Doppler mismatch. I'll talk to you some more about that. So let's start off with image orientation. Well, in a sagittal or longitudinal view, pretty straightforward. The heart's to the right of the image, distal vessel to the left. Transverse or cross-sectional image is a little more confusing sometimes. The patient head is really behind the monitor and the feet are in front of the monitor. So therefore the patient's right is to the left side of the monitor. So in a transverse or cross-sectional view, the right external carotid or the right lobe of the thyroid, which is medial, should be to the right of the screen. For the left external carotid or left lobe of the thyroid, medial is also then to the left of the screen. So remember, right external to the right, left external should be to the left. That's proper orientation. So one of the most misleading things is watching an experienced sonographer scan. It's something that looks easy. But man, it's a tough job. And after a long day of scanning, you just want to kind of set out on the lounger on the beach and take a little nap. So here I am. So let's look at image orientation. So the viewer is here to the right, looking from my feet to my head. Here's the plane that ends up cutting through. And here's the image that we should see. The patient's right to the left side of the monitor and vice versa. 
One other aspect to consider in image orientation is really the transducer approach. When we're doing a carotid artery study, sometimes we can see things a little bit better from an anterior position, but oftentimes we scan through the sternocleidomastoid muscle, a more lateral position. And this is why posterior is not really posterior. So if we say posterior wall of the carotid artery, that's kind of relative. Might be posterior on that particular image, but we need to appreciate the plane and realize that it's not truly the posterior wall. Okay, you got all that? If that's the case then, assuming correct orientation, which side is being imaged? Is this the right side or the left side? So, did you get it right? I'm sure everybody did. So remember, in a transverse view, you're looking from the feet to the head, so the patient's right is to the left of the screen. That means the patient's medial side is to the right of the screen, and therefore the external is medial. This is the right internal and external carotid artery. So image orientation, it's kind of a straightforward minor thing, but it's extremely important in order to properly interpret the information. Hope you enjoyed Tuesday's technical tip on carotid duplex. We got more to come. Next one, chapter two, instrument settings. If you need to earn any category one CME, please visit us at virtualbanecenter.com. Everybody go out and make it a good week.